if I make it tomorrow for class, I'll show up. But if I don't show up after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, then it means that I'm held up somewhere. Okay. So what we want to talk about this evening is something called projectile motion. Now, projectile motion, yes, the name is very big or the weight is very big. But this is basically something which some of you have done. I'm sure some of you have been involved in riots where you're throwing stones at the police and the police themselves responded by firing tear gas at you. So those things you're throwing at the stones, at the stones you're throwing at the police, those are what are called projectiles. The tear gas the police were throwing at you, that's also what is called the projectile. Now when it comes to your projectile, by definition, a projectile moves under the influence of gravity. It's not a rocket. A rocket has got an engine. So if it's got an engine, then it's a rocket or it's a missile. But if it doesn't have an engine and it's just moving under the influence of gravity, it is called a projectile. And the projectile moves in two directions at the same time. It will move along the horizontal direction. So it will move horizontally and it will also move vertically at the same time. What we mean by moving horizontally is that when you throw your stone, your stone is going to cover some distance. That's why we throw stones. It's going to cover some distance. At the same time, your stone is going to move up as it is going forward. It will slowly move up, rise to maximum height, reach maximum height. Then as it continues its journey, it will start to fall back to the ground. So basically that's what we are interested in. That's the kind of stuff we're trying to look at. The reason why the projector goes up, reaches maximum height, it doesn't go forever. It's because of gravity. Because the Earth is always pulling on these things. Okay. So, yeah. Anything which moves in two directions, which moves horizontally, also moves vertically at the same time. This horizontal movement and the vertical movement are happening at the same time that is what is referred to as a project projector so projectors move in two different directions at the same time by the end of by the time we're done with this lecture you should be able to describe how a projector moves there are two motions there is horizontal motion and there is vertical motion so we can manage Eh? So I'm saying, by the time we are done with this lecture, you should be able to describe how a projector moves. Now the thing about projectile is that they move in two different directions at the same time. There is horizontal motion, so distance along the ground, and there is also vertical motion, so it moves up and down at the same time. The thing about the projector moving along the horizontal direction is that along the horizontal direction, a projector always moves with constant or uniform velocity. So along the horizontal direction, there is no acceleration whatsoever. So the velocity or the, the speed or the velocity of the projectile as it moves along the ground, parallel to the ground, its velocity doesn't increase. There is only acceleration when the projectile is moving in the vertical direction. How do we know that there's acceleration? It's because when this projectile is moving along the vertical direction, it needs to reach maximum height. When an object reaches maximum height, we know that its velocity is zero. So in one direction, the, velo the, the velocity of this projectile will reduce until it becomes zero, then again it will start increasing. So along the vertical direction, there is acceleration. So this is an important point. A projectile moves in two directions, the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. The horizontal direction, there is no acceleration. The acceleration is only in the vertical direction where the projectile has to reach maximum height, then come back from maximum height. The other thing we are interested in is how much time it takes the projectile to reach maximum height. This time which it takes the projectile to reach maximum height, that's what you're calling the rise time. 
So you should be able to work out from the equations of motion we have obtained, you should be able to work out what the rise time is. How much time does it take the projector to reach maximum height? The one thing we know about maximum height is that at maximum height, your projectile has a velocity of zero meters per second in the vertical direction, not along the horizontal direction. Along the horizontal direction, the velocity is constant. So along the vertical direction, your projectile continues to move at maximum height. But in the y direction or the vertical direction at maximum height, the velocity is equals to zero meters per second. Yeah, internet connections clearly. I need to present again my screen. <clears throat> Apart from rise time, we are also interested in the height, the maximum height which a projector reaches. We can find this maximum height which a projector reaches from the rise time because we we'll know how much velocity our projector had then we can work out this maximum height next the other thing you want to find out is how much time does it take your projector to fall from maximum height to the ground and that is what is called the fall time so we are interested in the time it takes a projector to rise to maximum height that's the rise time we are interested in what the maximum height is we are also interested in how much time it takes your projector to fall. That's what is called the fall time. Then the other thing we're interested in is something called the flight time. How long is this thing in the air? The flight time is simply the sum of the rise time and the fall time. So you add how much time it took to rise plus the time it took to fall. And that's going to give you flight time. The reason why we're interested in flight time is because flight time is related to the distance, the horizontal distance which your projectile is going to move along the, along the ground. The more or the longer the time your projectile spins in the air, the more distance it covers along the ground. So the range increases. So basically, how far a projectile moves along the ground depends on how much time it spends in the air so the more time it spends in the air the more it's more ground horizontal distance is going to cover that's what the range is so we're going to see that the range actually along the horizontal distance we know that the distance or the velocity is going to be constant so whatever the velocity is which is not changing multiplied by the flight time is going to give us a range then the other thing you'd be interested in finding out is the velocity with which your projectile hits the ground. We will show that if a projectile rises to maximum height, then it comes back from maximum height to the ground through the same amount of height, then the velocity with which the projectile hits the ground should be the same as the velocity with which it went up. So that is what is in front of us and this is what basically a projector looks like like this so something moves up gets to maximum height then it's going to come down how much time it's in the air that is what we're referring to as flight time okay so we have mentioned that a projectile is going to move in two different when you throw a projector when you're throwing a stone or the police are firing a tear gas that tear gas is going to move horizontally and it's also going to move vertically so if we are to make any calculations with our equations of motions we need to know how much the velocity of the tear gas or of the stone is along the horizontal direction and along the vertical direction so we need to know the initial velocity so whenever something is thrown up or it's fired up in the air it is important that we know what is the velocity along the vertical direction or the y-axis 
and what is the velocity along the x direction or the x axis so we need to know the x component of the velocity the initial velocity we also need to know the y component of the velocity we have mentioned a couple of things so if for example like in this case an anti-aircraft gun is fired with a velocity it comes out the with a muzzle velocity of 550 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees to the ground so this is a big gun and it's fired and the bullet the shell comes out of the gun with this initial velocity this initial velocity is being fired at an angle okay it's being fired at an angle and we need to find out the first thing we need to do is we need to find out how much is the initial velocity along the x-axis and how much is the initial velocity along the y-axis that's what this table is doing here we are trying to find out what is the initial velocity of this u equals to 550 meters per second along the x-axis and along the y-axis once we know the initial velocity along the x-axis and along the y-axis then everything else falls in place so in that case since the angle it makes is 45 degrees our ux which is the initial velocity of the shell along the x-axis is going to be 550 meters per second multiplied by cos 45 and this is going to give us a velocity of 389 meters per second along the y-axis which is pointing upwards the initial velocity along the y-axis is going to be 550 meters per second times 45 degrees and that's going to give us a 389 meters per second so for this angle 45 degrees the initial velocity along the x-axis and along the y-axis as we can see they are the same okay the thing to note here is that along the x-axis there is no acceleration so along the x-axis the initial velocity ux is always going to be equal to the final velocity because along the x direction there is no acceleration the acceleration only occurs along the y direction the first thing along the y direction which is going to happen is that the shell as it is fired from the gun along the y direction will start moving away from the surface of the earth going away from the surface of the earth approaching maximum height when it does that so the initial velocity is this 389 meters per second in the y direction so it goes up it's going to take a certain amount of time to reach maximum height that is the rise time so we're interested in that but the thing which happens at maximum height is that the velocity the final velocity at maximum height is going to be zero meters per second so that shows you that as this thing is rising to maximum height from initial velocity ui which is the velocity along the y direction then it rises to maximum height the velocity is going to reduce from 389 meters per second to zero meters per second that shows you that acceleration has occurred because the final velocity is zero meters per second the initial velocity is three eight nine meters per second there's been a change in velocity using that information you can find out how much time it took for this thing to rise because as the thing is moving away from the surface of the earth there's a reduction of minus 9.8 meters per second squared so you find the rise time then after you find the rise time you can find out how much time it takes to fall again through the same height so you find the fall time Using the rise time, you can also find out the maximum height which was reached. Okay, so let's look at that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to calculate how much time it takes your projectile to reach maximum height. So when your projectile reaches maximum height, and you're going to use this expression, V is equals to U plus GT, where V is the final velocity at maximum height, then U is the initial velocity then g is the acceleration due to gravity and t is the rise time what we are interested in is the y direction we look at what happens first in the y direction what's the rise time how much time does it take to rise to maximum height what is the maximum height to which it rises to how much time does it take to fall then after that 
we can look at what happens in the x direction so when you look at the projectile you start looking at what is happening in the y direction first then you can look at what's happening in the x direction so in the y direction the initial velocity is along the y direction the initial velocity of the projectile along the y direction is 389 meters per second that's the initial velocity and that's what you have here 389 meters per second when this shell reaches maximum heights it's going to have a final velocity of zero meters per second that's what the final velocity is going to be zero meters per second and the velocity would have been reducing by 9.8 meters per second every square every second that means that the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared this is supposed to be vy not ui so there's a mistake here so at the end of the day what we end up having is vy why are we talking about y because you're looking at what motion in the y direction so vy is going to be equal to ui plus g g which is the acceleration due to gravity and t the rise time in our case the vy the final velocity at maximum height is going to be zero meters per second the initial velocity in the y direction is 389 meters per second and the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second because this thing is moving away from the surface of the earth is that clear then t rise is the rise time are we together so far okay next you substitute these values of final velocity initial velocity in this equation so you end up having zero meters per second squared equals to 389 meters per second squared plus the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared then t rise when you drop the units you end up with zero equals 389 plus minus 9.8 t rise then this plus and that minus you end up with zero equals to 3.89 minus 9.8 t rise you take the minus 9.8 t rise to the other side you end up with 9.8 t rise is equal to 3895 uh, 389 then you divide both sides by 3 by 9.8 you end up with t rise equals to 389 divided by 9.9.8 and you end up with a rise time of 39.7 seconds so it takes this projectile 39.7 seconds to reach maximum height from the ground are we clear With this rise time, which is the nine point, yes. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Um, what have you used? Uh, what have you used negative uh, nine point eight? It is because the shell is moving away from the surface of the earth. So whenever things move away from the surface of the earth, their velocity reduces on earth it reduces by 9.8 meters per second if the velocity is reducing then it means that the acceleration is negative the negative acceleration shows that this object is slowing down so as object moves higher and higher it moves slower and slower right. until it stops until its velocity is zero meters per second squared that's why we have the negative. Any other question? Is there any other question before we move forward? Okay. With a rise time of 39.7 seconds, we can work out using this expression how far this projector rolls along the y-axis. So S is equal to ut plus half gt squared. So along the, we know that the rise time, it, it reaches, it's 39.7 seconds. Then we write this expression. So it's going to be S is equal to ui, the t, which is the rise time, plus half, then g, which is negative, and t rise again. 
So in this case, our initial velocity u along the y axis is 389 meters per second. Then the acceleration due to gravity as we are going up is minus 9.8 meters per second. And the rise time, which we found here, is 39.7 seconds. So our maximum height, S max, is going to be obtained by ui the initial velocity of the projectile along the y-axis multiplied by t rise the rise time the time it takes the projectile to reach maximum height plus half the acceleration due to gravity then t rise squared the ui is the initial velocity of the projectile along the y-axis and that is 389 meters per second squared so we substitute that then you plus uh, times the rise time which is the 9.7 seconds plus half then multiplied by g, which is minus 9.8 meters per second, second squared, then times 3.9, uh, 3.7 uh, squared. Then next, we drop off units. We drop off units. We end up with 389 times 9.7. So 389 times 9.7 minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 389.7 squared. When you do this calculation, you end up with a maximum height of 7,720 meters. So the projectile is going to rise to a maximum height of 7.72 kilometers. That's how high this projectile is going to rise. So we now have two pieces of information. The rise time, 39.7 seconds, and the maximum height to which the projectile rises, which is 7.72 kilometers. With this 7.72 kilometers, when the projectile falls, so it's at maximum height. At maximum height, when it's there, the initial velocity, the velocity is zero meters per second. And when it falls from maximum height, it is going to fall through a distance of 7,720 meters. So from maximum height, when it falls, starting with a velocity of zero meters per second, as it comes down from Earth towards Earth, the velocity is going to increase and it's going to cover a distance of 7,720 meters. As the projectile approaches Earth from maximum height, with at maximum height to zero meters per second squared, its velocity is going to increase. And since it's approaching Earth, the velocity is going to increase by 9.8 meters per second every second. G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So we use the same expression we used to find the maximum height, but in this case, we use it in reverse. So we have S is equal to UT plus half GT squared. We are trying to find how much time it's going to take this thing to fall. We know the distance. The distance is S max, 7,720. That's how far it's going to fall. Where is it falling from? It's falling from maximum height. At maximum height, the initial velocity is 0 meters per second squared. Then we're looking for the fall time, T4 plus half g is falling towards the earth so if it's falling towards the earth then the velocity is going to be increasing and acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second and t4 that's what you're looking for so when you make substitutions uh ui is zero meters per second t4 that's what you're looking for g is 9.8 meters per second then s max is 7720 meters we substitute these values for s max we put in 7720 meters equals to ui that is the initial velocity at maximum height that is zero meters per second times t4 we do not know t4 that's what you're looking for then plus half times the acceleration due to gravity as something falls towards the earth that's 9.8 meters per second squared times t4 squared when you drop off our units we have 7720 equals to zero times t4 plus half 9.8 times t2 uh, t squared four this 0 times t4 is going to give us a 0. Then this half times 9.8 times t, uh, t squared 4 is going to give us 4.9 t4 squared, uh, t squared 4. And that's going to give us 7,720 equals to 4.9 uh, 4 t squared 4. So we take the 4.9 t4 squared to the other side. We end up with 4.9 t4 squared. 4 is equal to 7,720. We divide both sides by 4.9, so we end up with 7,720 divided by 4.9. We end up with 1,575.5. We take the square root on both sides, so of these things, we end up with T4 equals to the square root of uh, 
1575.5 and when you work out this you end up having a t4 of 39.7 seconds so what you see here is this 39.7 seconds looks very familiar because we found a similar number here earlier here 39.7 seconds so what we see is that the time it takes your projectile to rise to maximum height is the same as the time it takes your projectile to fall as long as the height is the same if your projectile rises to 7720 and it falls through a distance of 7720 then the rise time and the fall time are supposed to be the same that's what we have here rise time and fall time are the same in the equals to 7 uh, 37 39.7 seconds is this clear Next, now that we know how much time it takes our projectile to rise to maximum height, which is 39.7 seconds, we also know the maximum height which our projectile goes to, which is 7,720 meters per second. We also know how much time it takes a projectile to fall, which is 39.7 seconds. We can work out the flight time. The flight time TF is equal to the sum of the rise time and the fall time. So basically we are asking how long is this projectile in the air so that is going to be equals to the rise time which is the 9.7 seconds plus the four time which is the 9.7 seconds therefore we're going to get the flight time of 79.4 seconds so the projectile is in the air for approximately 80 seconds and that's what you see with this cave here this cave from here from the start up to the end there the, pro the, the the projectile is approximately in the air for 80 seconds and you can also see the maximum height to which the projectile rises to that is somewhere 7720 so this is a graph showing how high the projectile rises to and then comes down in a, a showing you what about how much time it takes to reach maximum height that is close to 40 because you had 39.7 so that's about 40 seconds then another 40 seconds to come down like that so this is what this graph is trying to show you this is a graph of the the height to which a project arises to and how far it travels on the ground we are yet to work this out, but you'll be able to work this out very, very soon. Uh, this graph shows you what happens to the velocity along the y-axis. So the velocity starts off from, 3, 000, from 386, then it reduces along the y-axis. It reduces, reduces, reduces until it becomes zero, then after... 40 seconds, the velocity starts to increase again. So this is how the velocity along the y-axis of a projectile changes. So as a projectile goes up, its velocity in meters per second reduces until it becomes zero. Then at maximum height, for a short amount of time, it will be zero in the y-axis. Then it will start to increase again, like that, until it hits the ground. So you get an idea of what the velocities are when it hits the ground that they are almost the same. The velocity in the y direction as it leaves and the velocity in the y direction as it hits the ground. Okay, from that graph. The other thing we want to work out is the vertical velocity uh, with... I have a question, sir. Yes. Uh, so, as velocity increases, the acceleration reduces... Sorry? The acceleration doesn't reduce. It's either the acceler the only situation we're interested in is one where there is acceleration, and the only kind of acceleration we're interested in is a constant one. So the acceleration is always constant. It's 9.8 meters per second. 
if you are going away from the surface of the earth it is minus 9.8 meters per second if your body is approaching the surface of the earth the acceleration is 9 meters per second so the acceleration does not increase does not reduce the acceleration is constant with this constant acceleration if the acceleration is negative it means that the velocity will reduce and this reduction in velocity as you can see from this graph happens this is a reducing velocity this happens when the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second during this time from 0 to 40 seconds this is the time when your projectile is going towards maximum height here from 0 to 40 from here from 0 to 40 this is the time when your projectile or your rocket or your whatever stone you're throwing or the tear gas is going towards maximum height as it goes towards maximum height the velocity of your projectile will reduce because it's moving away from the surface of the earth at, at maximum height then it starts coming down as it comes down the value of the velocity of the acceleration will change from minus 9.8 to plus 9.8 so the size of the velocity of the acceleration changes this okay from minus 9.8 to plus 9.8 meaning that when it changes to plus the velocity starts to increase okay and it starts to increase by the same amount 9.8 meters per second is that clear the acceleration is the size of the acceleration is the same that's why we are saying uniform accelerated motion motion in which the acceleration is the same no sir it's not clear what part is not clear we are only looking at motion where there is constant acceleration in this case the part we are looking for we are looking at is motion of the projectile in the y direction all this thing here seeing here this is motion of the projectile in the y direction here this time this is showing you how the projectile moves in the y direction it moves along the y direction the initial velocity along the y direction is 386 because that's what the y component of the velocity is the actual velocity is 550 then we found what is the y comp how much is that 550 along the y direction it was 386 something like that so with that 386 as this thing starts going to maximum height the velocity will change but because it's moving away from earth going towards up the velocity will change by the same amount the reason is because the earth is trying to pull this thing back Okay? And the acceleration the Earth offers is 9.8 meters per second. Because the pull of the Earth slows this thing down, then the acceleration is negative. So uh, any object which moves away from the surface of the Earth under the influence of gravity experiences an acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second. When it reaches maximum height, the velocity is going to be zero. For a short amount of time, or no time at all, that object's velocity from zero will start increasing again because it will start coming down, as you can see, like this, until it hits the ground. So what is happening to the velocity is what this curve is showing here. This. As your thing goes up, your velocity values reduce. When it reaches 40 seconds, your velocity is going to be zero. Then after 40 seconds, your velocity, this means that you're at maximum height. Then after 40 seconds, your velocity values will start to increase again. Because now, your projectile is coming back from maximum height. So as it comes towards the surface of the Earth, its velocity increases fast, increases and it moves faster and faster. Is that clear?
Are we clear? The other yes, thing, okay, the other thing we are interested in is as this projectile comes back from maximum height along the y direction, what is the velocity with which it hits the ground? Okay, what is the velocity along the y direction with which it hits the ground? So what we know about this thing is that at maximum height, the velocity is zero meters per second. So the initial velocity at maximum height is zero meters per second then we also know that it took 39.7 seconds to fall so that is a four time then we know it's moving towards the surface of the earth so the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second so we can predict with what velocity this thing is going to hit the ground so that by using this v is going to be equal to v, u, y, uh, u plus gt so in this case since we're interested in motion which is happening in the y direction we're going to get vy is equals to uy plus gt then the four time so in this case the vy is the velocity you're looking for with which it's going to hit the ground then the uy is the initial velocity of the projectile at maximum height then the t is the four time and the g is acceleration due to gravity so you end up having zero meters per second squared plus 9.8 uh, meters per second squared times 39.8 so this one if you drop the units you have 0 plus 9.8 and 39.8 if you work this out you end up with the velocity this the velocity with which this projectile is going to hit the ground is the same as the is is going to be equal to 389 meters per second squared this 389 meters per second squared as you can see 389 meters per second squared is the same as this thing which you have up here when we created that table which split the velocity in two two parts this ui is equals to 389 meters per second so what you're seeing here is that if the rise time is equal to the four time then the velocity in the y direction with which you throw your projectile up is going to be the same as the velocity with which your projectile is going to hit the ground so this is what we conclude we conclude that the initial velocity in the y direction with which your projectile goes up is the same as the velocity with which it hits the ground 389 meters per second squared as long as the rise time is equal to the four time and that only happens if the height to which a projectile goes and the height through which it comes back are the same. Are we clear? So in the y direction, the velocity with which your projectile goes up is the same as the velocity with which it comes down. Okay. Next, the range. How far does the projector travel along the horizontal direction you should only concern yourself with the range of a projectile after you have found out the rise time you have found out the maximum height the projectile goes to you have found out how much time it falls you have found out the flight time because for you to find the range you get the range by multiplying the velocity of the projectile in the x direction times the flight time the only way you're going to find the flight time is by working out t rise and then and t4 and t so in this case the velocity of the velocity of the projectile along the x direction is ux along the ux uh, along the x direction there is no acceleration if there is no acceleration then it means that the initial velocity along the x direction and the final velocity along the x direction are the same so therefore vx is equal to ux is equal to vx which is equal to 389 meters per second squared and for you to get the range so you multiply your velocity along the x direction 
times the flight time so it's going to be 389 meters per second times 79.4 and that's going to give you a range of 30,886.7 so that is approximately 30.9 kilometers that is what you're seeing here on this graph this graph that is approximately 30 point something thousand kilometers meters <coughs> so that's how far your projector moves are we clear for you to get the range you multiply the velocity of the projector along the x direction times the flight time is this clear Okay. The other thing is what is the final velocity with which the projector strikes the ground? We know about these velocities. In the y direction, the velocity with which the projector strikes the ground is 389 meters per second squared. Along the x direction, the velocity does not change. So the final velocity along the x direction is equal to the initial velocity along the x direction that is 389 meters per second squared. So the strike velocity can be obtained by doing this. These are the components of the final velocity. Vy, 389 meters per second squared. Vx, 389 meters per second squared. So you can find how much V is. V is equal to the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. That's going to give you V is equal to 389 meters per second squared plus 389 meters per second squared. That gives you a final velocity V of 550 meters per second. This 550 meters per second is the velocity with which this projector was fired from the gun. So what this shows is that the velocity with which a projector is fired or the speed with which you throw your stone is the same speed with which it's going to hit that other person. Okay, is this clear? All this happens because the height through which the projector goes is the same as the height through which it falls. Are we clear? Okay, so we're going to come to the end here. Uh, hopefully I can make time to meet tomorrow so that we discuss the other topic which is equations of projectile motion which is related to what the, what you've just from looking at here but you're going to look at things more differently in terms of equations so that we can come up with the formulas to use for projectile motion okay um we're going to end here unless people have got questions Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, see you tomorrow.